Peace, peace, peace. Welcome to the Scrap and Roll MMA Podcast. I'm your host, Sky. We are back. Damien, Jay, CJ, all your hosts are here today. Let's go ahead and hop right into it. It's been a minute. If you guys didn't already, make sure that you check out the Sunday Hangovers because, uh, you know, that, that show's a little bit more spicy than that. Like, more spicy than this. Like, we, you know, we just letting it all hang out. Pause. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, make sure that you guys go check out that pod. Um, and we'll be having those pop up every Sunday, just shooting the shit about what happened in the previous episode. Um, as you guys know, it's been a couple of weeks, uh, since Damien's been here. So we haven't got to talk to him about a lot of the different fights. Are there any fights that like you've been burning to talk about? Mm, I've been wanting to talk about that, that Justin Gaethje fight. <laughs> what did y'all think about that? Cause I know y'all were talking about how, uh, Michael Chandler is like, the most entertaining fighter, but I, I got to give it up to Justin Gaethje because my boy's a dog, bro. When he's in there, he in there to to put in work, and it doesn't matter if he's going to get beat up doing it either. <laughs> yeah. Facts. So, Facts. Yeah, with that fight. All right, so with that fight, did Justin kind of start off slow that fight? Hey, he was Justin, kinda... Justin, I think Justin was in regular mode, but Faziev was just too fast for your boy. <laughs> Faziev was like an ultimate. <laughs> My boy was quick. He was so quick. And I was looking at Justin like, uh-oh, like, <laughs> this might be the one, you know. But, you know, come the second and third round, he started picking it up. And the thing about Justin, and I was telling India, too, we were watching, and I was like, watch out for those uppercuts. But he didn't throw any in the first round. But in the second and third round, he started clinching them and hitting them with the uppercuts. And I think that's where a lot of that damage came from, the dirty boxing. Yep. And, man, that that fight right there, that was fight of the night for me. I don't even know if it won fight of the night, did it? I could imagine it did. Yeah. He always went in the performance bonuses, ain't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is. In 11 of his fights, he's won 12 uh, performance of the night bonuses. Or, I'm sorry, he's won 11 pr- uh, prior oh, to this year. Points. One, yeah. So, um. Hmm. And there's been a couple of times where he's got performance of the night and fight of the night. Um, yeah, and and Rafael Fazeev, he ain't he ain't just a walk in the park either. You know that that man. A lot of people were th- thinking that he was gonna get it done and be at the top of the charts. So psh, I gotta give it to Justin, man. He's one. He's one of those. Uh, what do you what what do they call those? The um, the door. What what is it? Uh, gatekeeper, the gatekeeper. For? The gatekeeper. Yeah, he's he's like one of those gatekeepers in that division right now, for sure. Facts, facts. Yeah, that uh, was a fun one for me. That one was the most exciting fight of the night for me, and I, and I enjoyed watching Gunnar Nelson too. That was dope. Do you enjoy watching him or his porn stash? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got that stash, don't you? <laughs> Man got a thigh tickler. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Damn. What's he doing right now, Diego Sanchez? As long as he left yeah. that guy, so that's good. Psychopath. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Quick question Who's more of a legitimate psychopath, Diego Sanchez or Rodstar, Mr. Strickland? Sanchez. Uh, I'm gonna go with Strickland, <laughs> o- only because, like, I think there's. Oh, you know what? I don't know. Like, they both wild. Like, mm, yeah, maybe Sanchez because he always yeah. seemed like there was like something behind the eyes that just yeah. wasn't right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. D- Diego, like Diego, naturally just out there like mentally out there you know what i'm saying strickland is just dumb but diego sanchez just look like he got some little screws loose in there um yeah that's a good question Shit, i don't know man i mean did y'all hear your boy strickland on ariel's podcast so talking about how he like really just wants to kill somebody yeah yeah i, I think bro just be talking though you know yeah yeah that's how i feel he's just one of them little ignorant white boys you feel me Shout out to all my ignorant white boys. Yeah, shout out to them. <laughs> Not for uh, me though. Uh yeah. How did you feel about the John Jones versus Gone fight, uh, Damien? Me? Oh, I was yeah. disappointed in that. 
You already know. I was going to oh, him. yeah. Hey, let's get your boy. <laughs> let's get your boy. I forgot he was with the train with this guy right here. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah, was, yeah. I didn't, I didn't expect that to happen. I did say, though, if, if John Jones was going to get it done, it was going to do to the wrestling and the ground game, which we all saw what happened. But to be fair, we didn't see much of John Jones stand up, but what we did see, my boy was looking kind of sloppy. <laughs> yeah. He threw like two, two or three strikes. He was swinging at air and like out of position and everything. I was like, "What the hell?" And then I felt like he felt it too, and that's why immediately he was like trying to go for that takedown. So, hey, all, all power to him. I still don't think that he would go though. So, Ooh. hey, Sky, don't Get take into it. Wait. Hey, Sky, don't don't forget to insert the clip of your boy, though. <laughs> when we run that back, it's a must. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know, you know, Jace was on here. Remember, like, way back in, like, December, Jace was on here talking about uh, Cyril Gahn's going to get it done. He's going to finish him. He's going to make it look easy. So now, anytime that we reference that fight, like, we got to pause and go ahead and put up that clip uh, because <laughs> he was he was walling. And even on that on that same little promo that I put out, uh, Damien, you were like, you were like, dang, that's crazy. Like you really, like you really, yeah. Um, but yeah, you said you don't think John Jones is the goat, huh? Nah, man, I don't think he's the goat. I feel like he's overrated, honestly. I mean, on paper he looks, on paper he looks great. On paper he looks great. But man, I, I just feel like he's not getting the competition that he should be. He should be getting. Like, even with Stipe Miocic and stuff, like, I don't see Stipe winning that. I want to see him against someone that's his size, who has the grappling capability and the stand-up capability that he has. And Pause. Is, Name a fighter who does at heavyweight. That, that, there's, yeah, at heavyweight. Uh, at heavyweight, it's just the heavy Maybe Tom Aspinall? Who could hit, who could hit the hardest. Nah, I mean, Spivak has grappling, and then Curtis Blades has grappling, but it's not on the level of what John's gonna bring to to the table. But we shall see. We shall see. Listen, I feel like uh, Damien's trying to take my title as fucking <laughs> as as hot take king. Like he's yeah. trying. To, he's, he's coming for hot take king because that was that was out of fucking. That was hot. Left field. That was, that was left hit. field. Do you know what hey, I'm saying? Hey, that Wait. shit was explosive. Whoa. Man. Yeah, let me close my mouth. Yeah, and he been gone for dying. three weeks coming with that bop, bop, bop. Headshot, bang. <laughs> bang. <laughs> yes. Leon yes. Edwards over here. Yeah. That was like the funniest yeah. shit at the the start of that fight, where like you know Uzman walks over and Leon just laid off like oh four that was fight yeah yeah four five yeah. clips on his face. I was like okay mm -hmm. okay all right okay all right smoke yeah yeah that yeah, man, yeah that man living in this head ran free honestly after that knockout bro mm. you could see it I feel like Uzman was kind of my man was swinging that air he was <sighs> swinging that air. Like looking frustrated and then shooting for the legs and stuff. So, mm. <laughs> and I know you didn't feel the same way, Scott, but I'm saying I, I, watch, I didn't rewatch the fight yet, but watching it live, like I felt at the end that, yeah, Leon took that. Leon took that dub. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've watched it, uh, I've seen different people's takes on it, and I feel like a lot of people. Like, a lot of, like, um, athletes, like, a lot of, like, the MMA fighters and, like, the commentators and stuff felt like it was a draw. But, like, the fans felt like, you know, Leon won. For me, like I said, I, I think that it was a draw. I don't think anybody did anything spectacular. But, honestly, I really feel like, and I know that, like, it's, you know, we hate it as fans when people come out with excuses. But, like, I, I do think something was wrong with him. Like, you know, like, sometimes when somebody just looks so wow. off. You start thinking to yourself, like, like what is really going on here? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we'll never know, and, and we shouldn't know because everybody goes inside there with an injury. You know, there's always something that's happening. Um, but, you know, last week we are on the Sunday Hangover, we kind of talked about, you know, what should be next for Leon. Um, Retirement. <clears throat> Excuse me. Leon. Or Leon? Oh, sorry. I think you said Uzma. <laughs> I mean, you know, what – What say – Okay, say if Usman takes on 
Shit, I don't know because he's fought everybody in the top he got, five. He got yeah, fire coming though. It's gonna you be know, like actually, wait, like, I got it. I got it. Uh, the dude he hasn't fought. Let him fight Wonder Boy. You were saying, oh, I seen somebody on TikTok was talking about it, and they just just dismissed Kamaro. They were like Wonder Boy, or was that you saying that the other day? And you're like Wonder Boy would just wear him out. Nah. Was that you? Who's you? Uh, Jace. Okay. Was it me? Okay, then it was somebody on TikTok. There was just like a uh, Wonder Boy would. No, I think it was the Boisterous Boys. I was listening uh, to the Boisterous Boys. Shout out to the boys, and they were like Wonder Boy would wear him out. And I was just like, damn. They were like, why would you want to do that to him right now? I'm like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah, but at the same time, like y'all acting like like even to say that, like it's not like it's not like Leon went out there and styled on him and was fucking yeah. him up. Like you know yeah, what I mean? Like it was, it was just it was it was it was an okay fight. You know what I mean? Like but it was just neither one I of could, them I, looked like their best version of themselves to me. I can say though that he kind of made Usman look like not Usman like. I could say that Usman was out there not looking like himself. Looking like and Leon Mill. actually looked better. He looked out of the out of the trilogy. He looked the best. That he, he's the only one that's like actually progressed every fight. Well, the last fight was kind of a fluke, but he did get the knockout. So you know, he but his wrestling. His wrestling defense, though, in this one was actually pretty good. I was actually pretty impressed that the way that he was able to step them takedowns and then circle off of the fence, get out of the mm -hmm. clinch, and then we back in the middle of the octagon. And he did get taken down. Like Usman took him down with that little like shoulder throw. Oh, that was nice. Something. Yeah, that was yeah, that nice. was nice. Yeah. That was a nice takedown. But he didn't really do nothing with it. And he popped back mm -hmm. up and was like, "What's up?" So right. I, and I, I was just... I was going for Usman. I, I think I that, Edwards for that I think I want to see Usman in another fight. If we see the same Usman, then I'll be like, okay, hang it up. Yeah, he's, he's it up. on the decline. If we see mm. the Usman that we were used to seeing, the Nigerian nightmare, then I'll be more apt to be like, that could have just been a bad night for him, an injury night. Like we know that he's coming in with injuries, period. No matter what he says, but we don't necessarily know the degree to what they are. I know I've seen a quote, uh, Francis Ngannou said that Kamara was barely able to train for this uh, fight and that he was severely injured, but obviously he wasn't mm. talking about it. Um, but that, you know, that's coming from Francis, so it is what it is. But, you know, at the end of the day, what's next for Leon? It cannot be Dana White, uh, Privilege, <laughs> Kobe Covington. De Tomorrow. Leon has come out and said that if oh, they no. send him a contract, he's not going to sign it. Uh, if it's if it has Kobe's name, uh, obviously he wants to go up against Jorge Masvidal for the three piece in the soda. Um, I think that my my personal opinion is at this point I have become a full fledged Bilal Muhammad dick rider because y'all are disrespectful to me, boy. <laughs> Yeah, keep it. Never hey, thought I'd say that in my hey, life. Hey, keep your mouth closed while you're over there. What is you doing? <laughs> <laughs> that's, I mean, that, that's what Bilal brings out of me. <laughs> the white mouth? Yes. <laughs> hey, yo. Hey, yo. <laughs> so how you feel about that, uh, Damien? How do you feel about mm -hmm. um, Leon versus Bilal instead of Leon versus Kobe? Or the strap? I think I'd rather see Leon versus Kobe, honestly. Cause Kobe you... really been on the shit. I can't, I can't, I can't hate on the nigga because he could really fight. Homeboy but could do, really fight. Do you think he deserves it after winning one fight, right? But Lau's on a nine fight win streak, right? He uh, TKO'd yeah. his life, his last opponent, right? Who was supposed to run through him? Who was who, undefeated? Who did he fight? Who did he Sean, fight? Last? Sean Brady, Brady with a TKO. Oh. But let's yeah. uh, let's also remember that Bilal Muhammad can't sell out a McDonald's. <laughs> Couldn't sell a, a McDonald's. So let's let's but, also. But, but even but Aljo like can't Bilal. sell. Yeah. Aljo can't like to see sell. Bilal fight fight these top contenders though. He has. He, has. That's what I would like he fought see. Luke. Who, who he fought the, Wonder Boy. Yeah, all of them was in the top ten. Every yeah, single one, time, yeah. Luke A, Wonder Boy, and Sean Brady, they were all in the top 10, and they were all supposed to outstrike and beat the dog crap out of him. The only yeah. people in front of Bilal is Gilbert Burns, who they, um, he's uh, set Fighting. to fight, yeah, yeah to fight, fight um, Jorge. Um, Kobe, who will not sign the contract to fight anybody, but can mysteriously get over his brain damage and come and weigh in. 
Um, and, <laughs> and the champions. He tried to fight Cumshot. Cumshot didn't want the smoke. Who? Kobe. He That's came out lie. and said it. That, he's a liar. We've all seen that he's a liar. That. Kobe's a, a liar? What? Yes. I don't, I don't think he tried to fight that man, honestly. No one's he scared of cum shot. He came out and said, I'm not fighting him. He's unprofessional. Blah, 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 blah. Man, listen. At the end of the day, if, if they don't run Bilal, it, it's it's just getting ridiculous. Like, like, don't even show us rankings. Don't stop showing us rankings. Yep. Don't, like, like, let it go. If it's just, hey, whoever talks the most, whoever's going to sell the most pay-per-views, well, then let's just go by that. But, like, let's stop acting like the rankings actually mean something if they don't. And I'm cool with that. If they don't mean nothing mm-hmm. and we just doing, like, hey, whatever we want to see, whatever – then cool, let it be that. But stop putting numbers next to people so that then people can't dodge and be like, oh, he's ranked number 13 and I'm ranked yeah. number I'm ranked number six, so why would I fight him? You know what I mean? Because that's what they were doing to Leon when he was coming up, who wasn't fighting nobody either, right? So that's why he had to go on the streak that he went on and, and Kobe and Jorge and nobody would fight Leon. Now Leon's the champ and now all of them got something to say. Everybody got something to say. Like Bilal's, Bilal shouldn't even have to fight Sean Brady. And like, oh. it, it, wait, wait, wait. It, Sorry, CJ, cut you off. Go ahead, go ahead, bro. Go ahead, bro. Can we just give Sky like three seconds to calm down? <laughs> that was, that was just all. Oh, she was ba pa pa pa. All you, CJ. I just had to. No, acknowledge but that. I. I a thousand percent agree with you, Sky. Like, what's the point in going in there and getting all these fights, winning all of these in a in a in a win streak, but the person with the loudest mouth gets the shot? And I know it's all about yeah. selling tickets, it's about making money. So it's like he can just go call people names and do all of this shit, and then Bilal will get people in the seats. Like I was watching Cheeto, and I was like, bro, you could be a badass and still be respectful and stuff like that, and still win and still get your shot. So it's like, what's the point of winning all these fucking fights if you don't even get your shot? You know, it don't make no sense. Yeah, it's politics, honestly. It's politics, exactly, bro. Yeah. And it's bullshit. That's exactly what it is. It's like, Kobe needs to fight somebody. He needs to fight somebody in the top five, at least. He ain't fought nobody in the top five and nobody under under 30 years old. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see him against Kamza or Who? Romanov. Yeah, put him against Shafkat. Since they want to put mm-hmm. Bilal against Shafkat. Yeah, they're not gonna do that. You know, are y'all good now? Are, y- are y'all good? Y- y'all no, get that I'm not, off? But you, no, I got one more clip. <laughs> but you know what they are gonna do? They're gonna try to bleed Bilal out, just like they did Francis and Ganu. They're gonna offer you these contracts, and when you say no, oh, okay. Well, then we just gonna roll you on another six months. We're gonna roll you on another six months. You know what I mean? That's all they're gonna try to do is try to bleed him out and force him into a position to where you're either A, you ain't got no more money, so you gotta take a fight. Shout out to Tony Ferguson. Or you gotta take a fight because your contract keeps getting extended and you gotta keep fighting these people. Or they hit you with the, oh, you, you're, you're declining all these fights, so, you know, you don't wanna fight anybody. And they just keep passing you up and they give somebody else a title shot rather than giving it to you. Like y'all said, it's all politics, it's all BS. Like John Anakin came out and said the exact same thing. Like it don't, it don't make no sense. Bilal Muhammad is the rightful person to fight. He's on the longest winner streak behind the champion. Yeah. And he's fought multiple people, three people in the top ten. And and all I'm saying is give him that shot. Win or lose, at least he gets the shot. You know what I'm Do saying? Do I think he wins? No, I think Leon wins. But yeah. that's not the point. I yeah. wonder could hey. they sell out the Apex? I don't know. Absolutely, they could. <laughs> I don't. I'm not. I'm not sure about Dude, that. You've seen how much I mean, people <laughs> gravitate towards Bilal. Don't do that. But I they don't have to, they don't have the headline. They could stack the card around them. Facts. Let me ask okay. you this. Y'all think Leon kinda a dirty fighter? He is. Kinda? He's not kinda, he's a cheater. He is a dirty fighter. I, I forgot what clip I was watching, but this nigga stepped on his nuts. Well, who was that? I forgot who he was fighting, but you there's a clip where he was like literally he stepped on his nuts and the dude got up. And it was um up, like uh it, it it was D's. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. <laughs> but you know, with the eye poke with Bilal that he did, gouging you know what I mean? with with the with the fence grabbing, getting the point deducted. I don't know, man. The nut this shots. Man, the nut shot literally stepping on the nuts of the of homeboy. I forgot who it was, but 
I saw that video. I was like, damn. He, he was, definitely like, is. Intentionally. Ain't no way you could say that was an accident. He intentionally did that. Oh, mm. oh, it was uh, it was Nate. It was Nate. Yeah, I don't know if y'all saw that clip. Mm, I haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's crazy. I'll, I'll find it and send it to you. But he like he's laying on his back and he like steps in between his hip and his cup, like mm. right in the in the in the crease where the cup would like press on his nutsack. And he got up and was fixing his cup and was like, you know, Nate Diaz don't give a fuck. Yeah. But, and yeah, was, and the grabbing of the gloves, like, mm. putting his fingers in the gloves. Yeah. Like, like that was one thing I think that Herb like really actually went back and watched his officiating in the in the first in the second fight that they had at uh 278 and realized that like there was a lot of stuff that he let go. Like he should have got points deducted in that in that second fight, right? Mm-hmm. Because in this fight, Herb was a lot mm-hmm. more on it because he he was able to go back and see all this fucking cheating that Leon was doing. You know what I mean? Like he He's a dirty fighter. But, you know, that's why we love John Jones. <laughs> if you ain't cheating, you ain't, you ain't trying. trying. <laughs> yeah. hey, if there's time on the clock, you can get dropped. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, you know, is there anything that you'd like to say, Jace? Uh, I'm really excited that Kobe is getting this well-deserved title shot. Um, <laughs> and like I said, on the Sunday handing over, and new betters bet the house. Hey, in time. hey, you know how his best be going, so go on ahead. <laughs> I mean, I'm doing the math over here, I'm about uh 78 on the year, so that's a win. Uh, no, this guy played three out of four. Hey, wrote a clip. I know, I know you Asian, but that math is off, baby. That math is off. <laughs> hey, roll that beautiful bean footage. Right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. But this weekend, boy, we we got a we got a main event that we have been waiting for. I feel like forever. Marlon Cheeto Vera is taking on Corey Sanhagen in San Antonio, um, and this is just pure violence. I mean, I, I know that. We've kind of touched on it a little bit, and I know Ariel um, and them touched on it last week, but I'm a firm believer that 135 is the best division by far right now. I, I don't, I'm don't. i not about to even go, like, I, I'm not even entertaining y'all 155ers. I'm, I'm not even going to entertain y'all because 135 is just stupid. It's ridiculous. How y'all feeling about Marlon versus Corey? Go ahead, Damien. We'll start off with you since you've been absent for three weeks. <laughs> Not absent. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for this fight, and I'm actually surprised that uh, Marlon is the underdog. I didn't see that coming, honestly. Mm, I mean, that's a good Sanhagen observation. Is a dog, but the fact that he's an underdog like that, if anything, I feel like this is a toss-up. It could go yeah. either way. Yeah. You know, so for him to be the underdog, that's kind of surprising to me, and I don't know what Vegas got going on over there, like what they seeing, but oh, this one's a hard one because she said. San Hagen got the <laughs> San Hagen got the got the height and the reach advantage, right? Oh no, and actually the, Marlon has the reach advantage. The reach? But he's a but he's, he's a shorter he's a though. Longer fighter. Yeah. yeah. By point five. Point five on the on the reach. Yeah. So yeah, this is an interesting one. I honestly I can't even call this one. I really can't. <laughs> All I know is that this is gonna be a fun one that you don't want to miss. Facts. What about Who you? Who you rolling yeah. with, Jace? Oh, okay. Me? Yeah. I like I was on TikTok earlier today and Sky did the little what did you do the audio for the for the for Cheeto? Yeah, for the yeah yeah yeah. About his daughter. And and first of all, you know, I'm probably gonna have to roll with my Latino brothers, so I'm gonna fuck with Cheeto. And second of all, his motherfucking story today had me almost in tears and shit with his kid. So I'm a dad, so I'm rolling with the dad game, and you know, you do it everything for your kids. So I'm rolling with Cheeto, slightly, slightly, because I fuck with Sanhagen, but I'm rolling with Cheeto just a little bit more. You know, yeah, it's gonna be violence. It's gonna be high level. And I'm super excited for this fight. Like it might, this might be one of them fight of the year type of fights. Mm-hmm. How you feel, Mister Jace? Oof. Um, I'm gonna check back in the back of the show. I'm still debating in a master way in my brain right now. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah, okay. We're going to be sure to come back to you, too, because I know how you like to skate out. And then you'd be like, I had a dream. I had a dream that uh, <laughs> uh, I'm riding with I'm riding with Cheeto. Like, yeah. even, like, Cheeto has really just proved himself to me. And, like, I wanted, I was, I was going for Dominic, you know, and, and Dominic was winning until he wasn't. You know, yeah. mm. Frankie Edgar was winning <laughs> against Marlon until he wasn't. Um, Rob Font. Yeah. Rob, Rob Font. Font. Rob yeah. Font was winning All those rounds until he wasn't and was getting pieced up. I mean, Marlon has, he just, and his determination and focus, like he's constantly training. He's constantly yeah. getting better. And when you just like, he's really embraced like being a full blown martial artist from from outside of a fight, it doesn't matter. And he's always ready. And, you know, we could argue that he should be fighting for a title shot rather than having to even fight Corey. But, you know, here we are. And he's still ready to fight. And if there's another fight that throw at him, I'm sure he'd still take it. Like, he's that, he has that much confidence in himself. So, yeah, I, I'm going for Cheeto. I'm not mad at Corey either. I just, I don't know. If he go inside, the, I didn't really feel like he styled on Song Yadong. Like aside from that elbow that cut him open, like he wasn't mm -hmm. really styling on Song Yadong in the way that like I felt like he probably should have. And I liked I thought Song still looked good in the fight even though mm -hmm. he was cut up. Um so for mm -hmm. me it's like I don't know, maybe we see a different version of Corey in there. But like as far as like just like when it comes to being a dog, I know Marlon, you gonna have to you gonna have to kill him. You gonna have to you kill him. You're gonna have to kill him. Facts. Yeah, cause he that fought it for part. something hey. else. I'm, I'm telling you, me watching that thing and his story, and this doing it for his daughter, it, it had me juiced up. Cause I, under, I personally understand it. And we always talk about stories and stuff like that. And like, I don't give a fuck about the one, the numbers and all of that shit. I don't care. I could relate to him. So I would rather see him win, as a fat, as a fan, as a dad. <laughs> As a father, relax. <laughs> relax. You know, as a dad, you know, uh, Latino brethren. So I'm rolling with him, man. All powers to him. All good energy to him. Shout out to Corey. And, you know, one thing, because that was like our second uh, feature that we did on him like that. But in like the first one, like he talks about how like when he came over to America, he only had like $2,000 to his name, came here and he was fighting for, you know, before he even got into the UFC, he was fighting for super low uh, just to try to like build up the money. And originally the surgery was supposed to be $80,000. And so that's what he was fighting for. But then like um, the when he finally had accumulated the money, the uh, what's it called? The surgeon actually did it for him for sixty thousand. Um, and if you guys haven't heard the story or seen the story, you know his firstborn daughter uh, was born with Mobius syndrome. Mobius. M Mobius syndrome. I saw that um, film. It wasn't good. No. Not more. <laughs> Bad timing. You can't do that on this. It's serious. <laughs> you know. But uh, you know. <clears throat> so like the uh, the muscles in, in her face. Like, prevent her from smiling, from, like, looking certain ways, and just stuff like that. Um, and so that was his whole thing. Was like, you know, just want to be able to to um, see his daughter smile and get that surgery done for her. And he was over here grinding for years. Like, he was away from his family. They were still in Ecuador. And he came here and got it done. Um, so he, he's got that dog in him. Shout out to Holly Holm. Holly Holm is finally back. Jesus. I think it's been, like, three years. years no, 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 no. She fought She fought Caitlin Vieira. That was in... Yeah, that wasn't 20, that long ago. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. She got fleeced in that fight. No, nah, she, she just, definitely <laughs> won that fight. She can just go. Yeah, she she fought in twenty twenty two. Okay, yeah, yeah. I thought I thought that Holly Holm won that fight. Yeah, me too. Yeah, y'all concerned too. about her slurring? I'm concerned that she's still fighting. Know. I'm I'm really just ready for her to retire. Yeah, I'm, no, but I'm I mean, over. like, have you heard her speech? Like, like you know, because she mm -hmm. was a. Uh, a boxer. world champion boxer, so you know, boxers and, and take, kickboxer uh, and kickboxer. So she's taking a lot of you know, a lot so of so what she's saying is, is she's took a lot of shots to the face, headshots, bang. Um, yeah, yeah, but <laughs> we'll, we'll see, you know, how Holly does, you know, 135. I will <laughs> say that Holly, I wouldn't Holmes. count her out though. Is a part of one of my favorite fights of all time, and I don't care what none of y'all say. Shout out to Holly Holm for beating Ronda Rousey's ass, making her look like an amateur. 
Yeah. You already know yeah. what it is. It, Headshot. Bang. She <laughs> hey, <laughs> Yeah. Shots fucking fired. Shout out to Tr Double H. <laughs> yeah. What's how, up? How come this one doesn't have uh, Vegas odds? Nobody's betting on this one? Oh, I uh, am. It might just not be up here. Who you See, going with? I don't care. I really, I really don't care about this fight in particular. You know who she married to, Yana? Mm -hmm. See, Santos. this used to be this used to be uh, Yana Kuna Sky, but now she's Yana Santos. She's married to the now PFL fighter uh, Thiago Santos, yep. aka the man with no knees. Oh, really? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. They yeah. met during um, rehab, the rehabbing uh, their injuries, and then at the P at the PI, and they've been now they're married. And they're married. Yeah, yeah that's mm -hmm. crazy. Clapping cheeks. I'm gonna <laughs> tell you right now, though. Nate the Train is fighting this weekend. And if y'all don't remember, he's the one that had that fight with the African dude in San Diego where it was just pure and utter mayhem. How that yeah. didn't win fight of the year, I don't know. I think we just forgot. Because yeah, that yeah, yeah. Fight, that's exactly what happened. Like, we just forgot. He was supposed to be fighting mm. Alex Caceres, but Alex uh, got hurt. So now he's fighting Austin Lingo. Don't ask me who he is. His name is Austin Lingo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought I think it's it's interesting that they got Alex Perez and Manel Cape, who are flyweights, uh, potential contenders. Uh, they're on here, and they also have Nicolau. Where is he? I can mm -hmm, I've seen that. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where is he? Matthias. Yeah, am I going? He's on the prelims. It? I think am he's I on the prelims. It? Yeah. I don't see it anymore. Maybe he got pulled. Oh no! Maybe somebody got hurt. Yeah, probably. That's not good because he was fighting somebody good. Like it was like. <clears throat> yeah, they moved it because I just seen his name too. I think he's on a different card. Oh, okay. Let yeah. me right. act, let me ask y'all this before we uh, switch topics. You got there. You got Sanhagen. I'm almost thinking in my mind like, what's the point of them fighting? Only in the sense of that, like, no one's getting a title shot after this. They're at least two fights out. Mm -hmm. You know, like. It's, it kind of sucks. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you're right, right? Because if we look at 135, at 135, we have Aljo, the champ. Number one is Marab. Number two is Sean O'Malley. Number three is Cheeto. Number four is Peter Yan. Number five is Corey Sanhagen. Um, and then you got Henry Cejudo, who is now back in the mix. Yeah, so you got Cejudo, who's going to fight for the title next. Yeah. You know, oh, well, it looks like it. And then on top of that, you know, you got O'Malley who's like, I'm Gucci on money. I'm going to wait for my shot. You know what I mean? Mm. And then, like, so. Yeah, trying so to fight him around. Yeah, so you were at least two fights back. And then what? Do you fight Marab just because? Like, who still, that still doesn't necessarily give you a title shot next. It's kind of like ridiculously log jammed here. Yeah, kind of sucks. I was just about to yeah. say that. Yeah. Because if Marlon wins. Not, Marlon wins. I feel like we're gonna see him versus Sean O'Malley again. I feel like that's a, the only fight to make, honestly. Marab, or you put him against Marab. So Henry yeah, put so, him against Marab. So O'Malley shot himself in the foot somehow. Then since he didn't get this this fight over Cejudo, because if he has to fight Marab, it's a wrap. It's a wrap, mm -hmm. like Trojan. Mm -hmm. It ain't gonna happen. <laughs> um, Sounds familiar. Um, yeah, because Sean was supposed to be next, and then next, you know, they bring in Cejudo. How do y'all think that fight looks? Like, how, who do you think, like, early, just, like, predictions, how y'all feeling about it? Cejudo. 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 Go Man. ahead and ask me. Go ahead and ask me. We already know. I'm going to make casual game going with Al Joe. Let's go. Oh, no play with me, man. Uh, you know, my, my mind tells me uh, Cejudo, because he's so smart. Uh, his so smart, is up smart there. As shit. And, yeah. Uh, IQ and, is above everyone. Yeah, mm -hmm. like he's like I like the more I see him in his videos, I'm like, dang, I kind of do want to see him against Volkanovski because mm -hmm. Volkanovski has extremely high fight IQ, mm -hmm. and to see that against that game plan against um with with that uh, Cejudo would bring in, that's really interesting. But at the same time, like I want Aljo to win just because. Y'all hate him so much. Because y'all hate Aljo so much, I just want him to win. I just want him to keep winning and pissing people off. People like Jace, who's down there acting like, you know, he's got a migraine, so he can't have sex tonight. 
And you know what's something <laughs> else about Triple C's? You know what we were talking about, John Jones? Triple C yeah. is just the winner. He is just a winner. You know what I'm saying? Everything he does, that motherfucker just wins. So he might pull it out again. So we got to wait and see for that one. Doesn't but he have um, a kid on the way? Who? Triple C. Uh, I know that he just had a daughter. Yeah, so he's not about to pull out anything. Yeah. <laughs> well, wasn't he a virgin this whole time? I don't know him like that. Apparently you do. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you know, uh, this weekend's card isn't the most stacked at all, but the main event is Fire. definitely mm-hmm. where it's Fire. at. Yeah, it's worth Fire. It. And, and the co-main event, I'm, I'm looking forward to that fight. I, I want to see Holly Holm screaming. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah, she yeah, could, yeah. She could do that, and those could be her feints. Yeah. If she's doing that, you know she's striking. And then make it sound like you doing something, you know, when you in there. Uh, the, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> nah, that ain't no pause. That's a full. That's nah, a full go. Fast four. Yeah. Hey, we fast yeah. four. He, he make it sound that's like you're doing life. something when you're in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's you. That's why you didn't get those Max Holloway tickets. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Go. Next. Why you gotta next. go there? Next. <laughs> next. Next. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into some hot takes. Why not? Uh, Let's uh, look my at some favorite hot part of the show. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, one of them says the Diaz brothers are overrated. I'm going to go back to, to politics. I feel like they're in the position that they are because of who they are, not necessarily what they do in the octagon. They could lose and still have more fans <laughs> than when they went in there with. I like the Diaz brothers. Like, they're very inspiring i want to see more fighters like that talking shit slapping people pointing at them laughing i like that it's, uh, it's entertainment I, I will say 100 percent the diaz brothers are not overrated for the simple fact that like we don't really put them on the mountain you know what i mean like there is not like there is no debate about oh well you know i think th-. like no one thinks that nate is going to go out there and beat you know what I mean? Even a uh, Leon Edwards, even though, you know, shout out to the fifth round, um, <laughs> you know, for the title or that uh, Nick is going to starch Alex Perea. Right. So I don't think they're overrated because the bar is not that high. People just love the Diaz brothers because how could you not? Mm-hmm. So That's to fair. me, I'm with you too, Jace. But to me, they're not overrated. Nick has a championship. So we talk about. Uh, uh, MMA. Nick is a champion at Strike Force. Uh, Nate beat everybody's beloved Conor McGregor, who was supposed to be the champ. You know what I'm saying? So, their skill wise, maybe a little bit, but them as as fighters and and entertainers, I don't think they're overrated at all. And also, Nate did win the Ultimate Fighter. That too. Mm-hmm. You know, they have accomplishments. Well, how you feel, yeah. this guy? Um. Eh. Are they overrated? I, I, I Surprisingly, I'm going with Jace on this a little bit of the fact that we don't have, <laughs> I don't particularly have high ratings of the, of the Diaz brothers. We like their vibrato. We like their attitudes. You know, we like everything outside of the octagon. But like when it comes down to it, like, like Damien said, win or lose, like we just came here for the entertainment of the Diaz. Like, like, so I don't, I think they're, properly rated like that's what that's i think yeah. that's what we should do overrated underrated rated or properly rated and i think yeah. they're right where they need to be at yeah yeah you know yeah. what yeah. let's run that real fast like new yeah. segment new segment hey, yeah we'll run that uh starting on uh next week we'll run some uh underrated overrated properly rated uh another one is watching fights lives watching the fights live is not worth it like in the stadium in the stadium. Oh, you started Sky because you the the, the live yeah. queen. <laughs> we did some broke boys, you feel me? Uh, <laughs> uh dang, that's sad that neither one of y'all said speak for yourself. Like y'all just let him call y'all broke and y'all just take it like that's crazy. Facts be facts. Um, uh watching live fights are not worth it. If you in the nosebleeds, stay at home. 
If you, if you're gonna be in a nosebleed, stay at home. Unless like you just want to be there for the energy mm -hmm. of the big crowds. Like like I've been to, I've seen every fighter that I wanted to see now at this point. Except I think now I want to see Conor McGregor because after seeing the pop that Nate Diaz got, like I'm like, oh man, like if it's louder than that when 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 Conor comes in, I want to see that. So I don't mind uh, paying for the nosebleeds for something like that. But yeah, like if you're in the nosebleeds, like stay home because you're gonna end up watching it on the jumbotron anyways. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I think live events are worth it, but you don't have to like keep, keep, keep going. Like go for one fight right. that you really want to see. Really, really want to see, yeah. And really get a chance to experience the fans. Because really when you go there live, it's not necessarily about the fight that's happening. It's about the aura of the whole arena. Being yeah. there to talk shit energy. with other people and, and talk to other fans and and we have Turn an up. amazing Yeah, it's about being around other people and having a good time. So is it worth it? It's definitely worth it, but like it's not something you got to keep doing. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I think it's worth it in the sense of if you got some really great fighters on the card that you wouldn't mind saying that, oh, I saw this person fight live, like then yeah, it's definitely worth it because the atmosphere and the energy and the walkout, you don't get to see those things on the TV. All the time. Yeah, you don't feel yeah. them all the time either. <clears throat> yeah. So like there's a certain energy and aura that comes with that. Now, even at the live events, I catch myself looking at the big screen a lot of the time because mm -hmm. it has the better mm -hmm. view. So <laughs> I feel like it's a it's a win win. So, I'm gonna go yeah. out. Uh, I'm gonna go out real fast and just say that 100 percent it's worth going to the fights. Go as much as you can, as much as you can afford. I know eggs are eighteen dollars, <laughs> but go ahead, you know, and pay twenty for a ticket. I don't care if you're in the nosebleeds or cage side. One, obviously, just the energy of the fans. Two, like I would say, 70, 80 percent of the people who go there actually love watching the fights. I know for me, I can easily get distracted at home with the phone or whatever else is around me and maybe not pay attention as I need to. Um, but at the end of the day, there's nothing better than feeding off someone's same energy, whether that it's your favorite fighter or they hate your favorite fighter. And that like back and forth jar that you have with someone like time 17 or 24,000 go fucking spend that money. You got to spend it somewhere. Do it on experiences, not on shit. Hey, um, <laughs> Yeah, the experiences in the in the going to a fight is amazing. You know what I'm saying? I'm pissed off. I fucked around and missed Bellator tickets, and they were that was a trash ass card. And I'm mad that I ain't buy it. It's just the energy, feeling it, buying a twenty dollar goddamn beer. The experience, like Jay said, you know, you want to you only live fucking once, so go to them shits. But for me, I don't go other places to watch the fight like on the screen. I'd rather do that at home. With my own yeah. drinks, on my own fucking TV, chilling. Other than that, take your ass to the fights if you have the, if you can, if you have the means to do it. At least, at least once in your lifetime. If you're a real fan, mm -hmm. you gotta go. You gotta go. Feel that and energy. Show up for the early. Beer. All of them. Watch yes. The whole yeah. Watch I just, the whole card. You pay I just for the ticket. You might as well. Shit. Yeah. I just think there's gonna be something to say. You know, like I'm mad that like I never got to see Kobe. You know, shout out, rest in peace to Kobe live. You know I know, I, mean? I know. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Or, or or Jordan or stuff like that. I haven't even yeah. seen LeBron yet. You know, like I want to yeah. be able to say, oh, I saw, I saw LeBron go for 35. Mm -hmm. You know, I yeah. saw Kobe go for 60. Like, no, you're right. It's going to be a great experience. So this, like, me, uh, Sky, been to a lot of them. Like, I could look back and that Cheeto head kick on DC or Dominic Cruz been playing and playing. I could be like, fuck, I was in there. And when that shit happened, the stadium just went crazy. You know what I'm saying? So it feels Sky, good. <laughs> Sky, you want to talk about your failed live experience? Yeah, I looked down for one second. That one second <laughs> I looked down at my phone. I hear, oh, and I look up and it's a wrap. It's a wrap. <laughs> it's a wrap. What that fight was that? Too. Yeah, that was uh, Cheeto and Dominic. Uh, yeah. Uh, that, that yeah. happened to me too. I went to go get a beer. I was waiting in line. The Terrence McKinney fight comes on. Yeah, he ends the dude in like 10, 15 seconds. I'm like, so. oh, damn. Yeah, yeah, and I just got there. I was like, <laughs> shit, I tell y'all, I tell y'all, ask this. You know, I went to go get two beers um, for the um, Carla Sansparosa and Rose, uh, Thug Rose fight. I could have went and got four. I was mad I didn't go get more <laughs> beer that time, but you know it is what it is. Gosh, yeah, yeah. that fight was terrible. Um, like 
in one of those fights, Damien and I, we got to see Zabit. We ain't gonna never see Zabit oh, fight yeah. again. Like, you know what I mean? That's so that's right. why we're saying, like, show up for those fights. Like, don't just be like, yeah. oh, I don't, ki-. you don't know who's on that card, yep. who you're gonna grow to love later on in life, who might not yeah. ever fight again, what kind of crazy knockout you might see in person. Because knockouts hit, hit different when you can see them in person. Like, it's mm-hmm. it's not like on TV. <laughs> like, you'd be like, oh, oh God. Um, or, that, and the- or that fighter stock rises, and now yep. they're on the pay per view cards only, and you can't afford the pay per view now. <laughs> Exactly. But you could have seen him on the fight night. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so Sky, you like, know. so like you were saying, Sky, uh, Nate Landwehr's on coming up, right? I don't yeah. know, bro, like that. But he was on that San Diego card. Yeah. I was in the building, and he put on a show. He, he just did. gained a fucking fan for me, so I'm gonna be Facts. going for him on Saturday. So, Facts. yeah, you get to see those fighters that you feel those energies from those fighters that mm-hmm. you've never seen mm-hmm. before. It's it's different. Yeah, and there's a difference between a pay per view card. And a fight night card. Um, mm-hmm. So, like, San Diego was my first fight night card. Every other card mm-hmm. I've been to was pay-per-view. Um, oh, and, you know, hey. I've been... Hey. <laughs> <laughs> We're just playing broke boy city over here, y'all. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, I actually think the fight night cards are better because they tend to go places who might, you know, where... Uh, Vegas gets one every other month, you know, like New you York, go to like San Diego, where like, oh, it's been the first time in three or four years, so people are ready to fucking explode. Yes, yes, mm. and, and they show up on time. Like, you can see the difference if you look at the Vegas crowd, like from March fourth when um, uh, John Jones fought. It didn't get packed until right before the mm-hmm. main event, and even at that, like there still wasn't a whole bunch of people in there. You go back to any of the fight nights, oh, them people be in there they're in mm-hmm. like paris do y'all remember paris was packed fight number one like there was yes yes it was almost mm-hmm. at full capacity you know so show up and show the fighters love like i know y'all love to be like oh you know y'all hate the apex but yet y'all don't show up like y'all hate the price well, of pay-per-view but y'all don't pay for pay-per-view like y'all want the fighters be, to get paid more but that, y'all man. don't pay for that <laughs> the the early the early prelim fighters too are the ones that are up and comers and like you could have seen them on the early prelims live with nobody in there and heard the impact of the shots and stuff Facts. but you decided to right. chill now they on the pay per view card and you can't afford to see them and I've been fans of uh, up and comers since you know I was about thirteen watching them. We don't know where that went. Lashawn Strickland, <laughs> hold it down. If you know what I'm um, talking about, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm mad it took you that long though. Why all the way to 13? You tripping. Oh dang. Oh, <laughs> yeah. uh, and then the last <laughs> one came out. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last hot take of the day. Uh UFC fighters are properly paid. We all know the answer to that. No. no, we don't. Let's hear. No. What y'all saying? Hey, definitely. First of all, no way in hell you should be paying for your own medical bills after a fight. They don't pay after a fight. I thought they didn't get, like, uh, health care. When they don't get health care, it means, like, you know, like, if you work for a, a regular job or whatever and you want to go get your annual, you know, you want to go get your teeth clean, whatever the case may be, like, they don't have that kind of everyday insurance, meaning your oh, spouse, I your see. kids, they don't have insurance for their family. They would have to pay for it um, if they wanted to have insurance. But anything that happens in the fight camp or um, anything that happens after the fight or during the fight, they get mm. that get. So like if you break your leg, they're not like, hey, buddy, you have to figure it out. No, they're, yeah. that's all insured and anything in fight camp. So you get like long lasting brain trauma that happens like after you retire like four or five years that's on you you don't get there's no health care for that right essentially yes because how can you prove when the brain trauma happened you can't we don't know if that brain trauma happened when you were sparring when you were a kid and you fell off a skateboard like because brain trauma doesn't just happen like oh it happened and now all of a sudden we're seeing the effect like we know that it happens years down the line all of a sudden you know you can't remember what color your car is okay yeah, I'll just use that as an example. Do I think that, uh, but, you know, let somebody else. CJ, speak. They're properly play, uh, paid? I don't think so. You know, I wish, hopefully the sports develops 
within a year, and I say that because the sport's still young. Look at the UFC is what thirty years old. So hopefully that these guys are putting their their lives and their bodies on the line, that they can start getting paid like the NBA or NFL. Because this is a rough, tough. It's one of the hardest sports ever, you know. But I know it's still young, and they still got to pay their dues to to get there. But properly, no. Like you, some are what getting ten and ten. So you're getting paid ten thousand to show and ten thousand if you win, taxes, paying your coach, your travel. That's, yeah, it's, you know, and it's hard. And you get your ass beat. Mm. I just wish those <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's hard. That's it's hard. But it's that's hard. A good point. And and we're just seeing we're just seeing, you know, what happens in the cage, you know. All of, I always tell people, everybody talks shit. I'm like, bro, you wouldn't even make the weight cut, you know. So I wish they the could. Training camp. Fuck no. So I wish they would be able to get paid, you know, more. I know the superstars do get what they get, but you know, the little guy that's at the bottom of the car, you know, at least to help their family out a little bit more. Yeah, that, that's a good point that you made about them getting their ass beat. Because I remember watching the car last week, and old boy got knocked out, and he was still trying to fight. <laughs> like I gotta fight. get paid, baby. <laughs> yeah. Me a fat bag for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was over there trying to wrestle Mark Goddard. <laughs> hey, Mark Goddard got out flinching. of there as soon as you see him flinching. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like somebody was trying to strike at him. Still, I was like, oh man, I feel bad for him. What about you, Jace? Oh, please, go, Scott. I'm I'm gonna go on a rant. Oh, okay. About time somebody else going to rant besides me. Um, you know, for me, I, I did a video, which I'll probably be releasing it sometime this week, if not next week, um, like a little short video, uh, like comparing the pay between the different companies. Um, and by far, you know, the UFC still pays more. Do I think that people are properly paid? I think we aren't privy to how much they're actually paid because they have a disclosed pay. So you may see like on MMA Junkie, it'll show, sal show salaries and it'll say, oh, such and such got paid, let's say 250000 But they made well over that, right? Mm -hmm. um, but so there's a disclosed pay and then what that, you know, the commissions are told, but then there's, they get paid differently. So we don't really know like how much they're actually getting paid. Um, for me, I still go under the belief of, you signed a contract, you knew how much you were going to get paid, yeah, um, yeah. and you still decided to come and do this here when you could have went somewhere else. In comparison to like one and PFL, um, some of their lower end contracts, I think one smallest amount to get paid is $2,000. That's correct, $2,000. Uh, PFL's lowest, is, I think is $8,000. Uh, Bellator's, I believe, was the same. It was between like eight. And, and 10, something like that. And the UFC is now their lowest is currently 12. 12, um, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and so is it cool to get paid 12K? No, not really. But the problem will always be that 12K to me and 12K to Ch Marlon Cheeto Vera, who was coming from Ecuador, getting $12,000 in cash is a complete difference. So you're going to have them people that's hungry. That's like, Hey, I mean like you might not want this money, but they want that money. Cause 12,000 USD mm -hmm. inside of Ecuador is, is a lot of money that you can really do something with. Is it fair? No, not necessarily. And without us having all the information as to how much money the UFC makes, what the actual split is. Cause these numbers that you hear that like, Oh, that the fighters only get like 15% or 18%. We don't even know that to be true. That's just some shit that somebody said. This is why I keep saying like everybody keeps repeating the same stuff. But like the reality is that we don't know because their books and their numbers are not disclosed. We don't know how much they're giving out to other people uh, or how much of the percentage of the gate the fighters are getting because it's just not, we don't have the information. Everything is hidden, locked up. And until we get that, who knows? Who knows if they're even in the red? I mean, who knows? You know what I mean? Like who knows if they're even in the green? I meant to say, we don't have any idea. Go. I'm logging out. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, <clears throat> just to rebut your uh, comment real fast, we know they're not in the red for the simple fact of their parent company, Endeavor, you know, and they have to answer to stockholders. 
You know what I mean? And now finally, <clears throat> because they are now a publicly shared company, we're starting to finally get in some light on more of the books of the USC, you know, because you got to be accountable for and you got to have public books on some of this stuff. Is it going to depth and detail how we want? Absolutely not. <clears throat> are fighters paid fair? Properly. Okay. Properly. Because even properly and fair are two different things. Properly, yeah. 100% not. Properly at the USC is kind of a microcosm of capitalism as a whole, you know, where you might have the CEO, you know what I mean, making 83% of uh, the revenue and then everyone else is split up, you know, making the last 17%. Right. So, no, that's not properly. That's not a proper thing you do. Yes, it takes money to make money and to promote. But it also like we all, I think, pretty much agree that the grunt or brunt of the work is done by the actual fighters. I've been watching UFC long enough where I remember the disclosed pay of these guys were fifteen hundred and fifteen hundred. At the end of the day, there's no way a UFC fighter should have to have a second job. Now, it's different if they just love that they do something. Shout out to Stipe, right? But when you actually have like a real time job, you know, working at a fucking coffee shop, uh, clocking tables, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So at that point, you know, it's not done properly. And these are contracted UFC fighters. There's no way. Um, I think that number one, and don't want to get too much and rant too long. We really need unions so that way they don't have this cloak and dagger not telling people what people are really making. Yes, we know the top fucking, again, a microcosm of capitalism. The top 2%, 3% of fighters are Gucci. They come out every day and say, yo, I, I, you know, I'm cool. You know what I mean? But that doesn't speak for, you know, the 97% rest of other people on the roster who are trying to scrape it together. You know what I mean? Trying to make things happen. Shout out to Tony Ferguson. Taking fights you don't want and or need to take because you got to get this money. Answer your question. No. Well said. Yes. Also with that, and I know it sucks, and we talked about this before, and you said these guys shouldn't have to do these things. These fighters, even the lowest level guy, needs to get on there, needs to get on Instagram. They need to get on TikTok. They need to get on YouTube. Mm -hmm. They need to do all these things where you can get self-promoted and make promote money themselves. on the side and promote their promote yourself. You know what I'm saying? You are your own brand. I know it fucking sucks and stuff, but there are people who are willing to pay you other than the boss person that you fight for, which also sucks. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But you got to hustle, man. Yeah, but you're really not your own brand as much as you could be because you're not getting your own sponsors. You know what I mean? You are you, getting your own sponsors. No, That's no, no, no. Go but, back to every Mike Chandler interview. His sponsors doubled. His money that he got from his sponsors doubled, even though he could not wear it inside the octagon because he's being seen by a larger group of people. That's what Mr. Dana White privilege is saying publicly. Is that true? Who knows? But if you're it talking is about true, it's true. You, wait, wait, wait. you just talked about you just talked about how you people don't know. So which one but is I, it? But this people was know coming they from don't Mike know. Chandler's mouth. Why would he lie? But you can clearly see the amount of people that he was sponsoring before based on now the sponsorships that he's promoting now. I mean, he's not doing free promotion. I mean, so you think about like back in the day, right? Like John Jones was the first individual fighter to get sponsored by Nike, right? You can't Fire. even do that now. You can't do that. There's Reebok, you know, Venom, and there that's is not true. Nike, and there is Nike. But there's that's not Nike. true because Kamaru is sponsored by Puma. He can't no, wear Izzy, Puma Izzy. in the op Yeah, sorry. Izzy is sponsored by Puma. So he can't wear it in the octagon, obviously, or during fight week, but he still gets his stuff off. He still gets paid from Puma. You think that they would be getting paid the same amount of doing it in an Instagram reel, supposed to wearing it in the octagon where most of the eyeballs are going to be on you? Do, well, the, the difference is, do I think that they're making the same? No. However, they're still getting paid. It's not like you're going to get, not like it's going to be like this drastic change because Izzy specifically because you brought up Nike and the whole Puma thing. Like it's not just an Instagram reel. Like he has like a full on like line, little line thing that they do mm -hmm. with him. You know what I mean? He has different brands. Like these companies have different brands. And even just to take it like away from like the big, big stars, there are other fighters who have like, I think even, um, it might've been Kevin Holland who was talking about it. Kevin Holland talks about the fact that like with his sponsors, he's like, you know, 
the way that he sets up his sponsors is he's like, hey, after X amount of hours, I'm taking this down. Like if there's any, he talks about how to uh, market your Instagram page so that you're constantly making money off of your sponsors and not just leaving stuff up for sponsors, like old stuff like that. Like, so there are people who are business mm. savvy who are taking yeah. advantage of, of these sponsorships. You know what I mean? I'm going to say this in closing and then I'll be done with it. Right. It, 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 it's like one, again, they could be maxing out potential deals because you are most, you have the most eyeballs on you when you're standing in the ring. That's the clip that showed on ESPN is you holding the belt up. And then number two, it still kind of goes back to the original point that I was making. Like I shouldn't have to have a second job, right? Americans, people, again, not to take it political, shouldn't have to have two or three jobs to make it. If I got one full-time job, Right. And I ain't trying to wild out like you should be good. So it shouldn't be on the onus of someone to have to make two, three extra side hustles when you work for a multi billion dollar company. That's it. I'm done. But in that in that regard. Right. Uh, so you think let's take a look at the, the lowest person on this car that you don't know. Oh, Haley's on here. Um, she's from off a contender series. Oh, I think you're talking uh, about Eminem's daughter. No, <laughs> no, Haley Cohen, right? She's never fought. She's from off a contender series. Um, you're saying that because she signed with the UFC, period, she should never, she should not have to work a job at all. She should come in making what fifty thousand a fight. Sure, why not? That what's the average American salary? Average American salary off the top of my head is forty three thousand. Fact check me on that. It's probably lower than that, bro. I'll say like 30. Yeah, yeah. around 30, 32. Shit, 40 is on the good side of some, for some people. Or you know, you know, it, no, the 43 might be the average, like. might be the average American household that brings in. But together, I, I know, I know 43 together. is a number. Mm -hmm. What well, we got, Scott Guy? Well, but, but uh, I. I hope so, they can get to a level like that. Maybe like the lowest person can get 50 racks. But you it know? could be right now. They're a multi-billion dollar company. They could get that right now. You know what I'm so, saying? Um, looking at it, 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 they break it down by age. Let me get this just in view a little bit more. And um, then, they, uh, sorry to cut you off. Uh, who, who, who is this? Uh, what site is this for, just for people out there? Uh, this is from firstrepublic.com. The fuck is that? <laughs> don't know but so the average age of 25 to 34 in the u.s in 2022 was 50,000 from 20 to 24 years old it was 36 i would say between 20 to 20 to 34 is like the average age of like your your newcomer into the ufc um so 50,000 so you're saying per fight Haley should be making Fifty thousand dollars for her first fight into the UFC. Sure, why not? <laughs> hey, I'll fuck with it too, Jason. And pay how much do pay me no women attention. soccer players make? Shit, less than that, huh? And make uh, twenty thousand around. I think it's what is it like twenty, thirty thousand dollars that a professional soccer women soccer player makes? I don't know. Uh, I will say the. Uh, what is it? The USSL is not a billion dollar company. I would say the WNBA is not a billion dollar company. You know who is a billion dollar company? The UFC. They were bought for a million. You don't know how much they were under because the Fertino brothers, they were under like 40 to $50 million or something like that. So like we, how, how do you know that? Much, uh, just based off of what the come at, what has come out of their mouths. Okay. So are we accepting what pe comes out of people's mouths or no? <laughs> well, they come out and say that there's a disclosed pay, but they get paid more. So, I mean, how is that not accepting what's coming out of their mouth? Mm. I'm just saying. So you're saying that they were up and then they just decided, okay, let's just sell it for no reason? I Well, I mean, again, not to go into the eddie bravo conspiracy realm i think they sold the ufc because they know lawsuits are coming just like it has been for the nfl um you know with with people um getting together in unions to go after the nfl as far as like why people have died and i think it's coming and they're they were smart to say mm, 
we don't want this smoke. We want to get out of this game because the lawsuits are coming. And so with that logic, you're talking about the biggest Endeavor is the biggest worldwide company, uh, marketer, whatever you want to call them in the fucking world. You're saying they are aware of this information and they were like, yeah, we're going to spend, what did they spend? 1.4 billion, 1.7 billion, something like that. No, on this company. I, I think it spent 4 billion. It, it was four or five crazy. billion. Yeah. 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 I think it, they, they sold for more than star Wars did. Yes, right? exactly. Um, so they seen that and they said, yeah, we're going to put X amount of billions of dollars into this company that's going to go in the shithole in the next X amount of years. That makes sense. Um, people who their only job is to be at the top and is to analyze these companies before they before they buy them out. And you're saying that they know this and they're like, yeah, we're, we're still going to do it. Well, yeah, exactly. Because when you get companies that big, so you look at like an Exxon Mobil, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, they are so big and have so much money. Number one, they'll keep you in court for 10 to fucking 20 years exactly. as the UFC is doing right now to uh, a lot of these union uh, fighters that's trying to be, uh, you know, unionize the fighters. Mm -hmm. and they will just keep you in court. Litigation, litigation, litigation. And if they do have to pay out, what does it mean to them? It's a drop in the water. It's a drop in a bucket. So basically you're saying that the Fertito brothers didn't wouldn't have been able to have enough money to be able to pay out these. Correct. There's levels to this. No, you know. I agree. I mean, yeah, there's definitely levels to it. Do I think that uh, a person who just came on to the scene should get paid $50,000 per fight? No. What? Okay. So, and guys, chime in on this as well so i didn't know this is going to turn into such a, a spicy topic um we found out the gate from the ot arena disclosed right um was nine million dollars mm -hmm. okay what's the percentage of fifty thousand to nine million but how many that. fighters you had 30 fighters on the card yeah, and so, and you got to remember, they're still doing the the win pay bonus. So if I win, now I make a hundred thousand. What's a hundred thousand compared to nine million dollars? You're talking about like, but fifteen one... fighters. So that's one point five mil, or seven would have to win, right? Out of the fifteen, seven would have to win. I have no issue, and I think uh, CJ Damien chime in on this. Is there a problem with a? 50 50 split from the company and fighters. But I think when you're saying that, because you said it's they sold what nine mil at the gate, right? That's, that's what they just were the into. gate, not even the pay per view. It's just the gate. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we also got to take into part what they have to, you know, insurance for the building for sure, the lighting, the rigs, sure. and all of that shit. So it starts sure. getting cutting down, you know for what I mean? Sure. So, yeah, what but is the, but the thing is, going. once again, you know. The, the only point that I'm trying to make is because we're not privy to the actual deductions, what's happening. So we see 9 mil and we're like, oh man, they should have been a 50-50 split. Like, mm -hmm. you know, 4.5 mil should have went out to, to the fighters. To the fighters. But then, you, but then, like you said, you got to account for travel. You got to account for actual employees that are actually there that like aren't actual fighters that are doing that. You got to account for hotel mm -hmm. stay. You got to account for the mm -hmm. amount that they pay just to rent the building, lights, rigs. That There's all different kind of stuff that goes sound. into it, but we don't have the information to be able to look at it and say, yeah, that makes physical sense. If you think about it, like Conor McGregor said when he went on the MMA Hour, he was like, hey, Francis, Francis was lit. Francis was at the PI the whole time while he was going through his through his disputes, guess what? At the PI, this is why I think all fighters should move to Vegas if they can and 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 be there because you get free food every single day. You get free training. You get free physical therapy. And Francis has been there living his best life for a whole year. <laughs> got his leg, got both of his legs fixed, all kind of physical therapy that would have cost him hundreds of thousands of dollars. Hey, I'm all for it. Get your money. Like, do your thing. Go inside here and use up these people. You know what I mean? But it's like, we don't account for that. Then they have the, the PI that's inside of Shanghai. We don't know how much money is being spent on that. When these fighters do get inside of these, you know, things and they're sent to like these world-class doctors that are doing these brain scans and stuff like that. Like they don't pay for that. We don't know where the money's going to say whether or not somebody is 
overpaid, underpaid, but what we do know is, should they get more? Absolutely, but I don't think either of us have an answer as to what the amount should be. So just so we we uh, we are all speaking on the same page, fifty thousand is is like uh, one percent of nine million. One point eight percent of nine million. That's nine million though. But what about like? So then do that times nights? seven. Do fifty times seven because that accounts for the losers, right? So fifty times seven. You're talking about you're talking about about ten percent, and that's just the gate. That's not even including pay per view concessions or anything else. So if really the number. Again, guessing, obviously no one is privy to that information. Let's say it's probably around 17 million that they made. 17 to 20. For this fight? You talking about pay-per-view? The live gate was was 9.8 million or something like that. So let's say pretty much 10 million was the live gate, right? You factor in pay per views, you factor in concessions there, you know what I mean? Or let's just even throw off concessions and say, you know what, that's a wash between paying for the building security concessions, that's a wash. But let's just say pay per views, right? And the, the gate itself, let's say about 15 million. Mm -hmm. All right. So even if you pay combined, let's say, uh, five million you spend on the fighters, like that's still 10 million for y'all. How much is enough? I know it's not enough, 12,000. <laughs> but oh. where are you going to get it from? Like, like, okay, so take the UFC out of the equation. If they go and they go to PFL, then they're gonna make 8,000. We don't hold the same light to these other organizations. When like the reality is, is that they still gonna get paid less over there. They're still not gonna get health care. And then you say, well, they can have sponsors, but who the fuck is watching them? You think they're making as much money with their sponsors as they are when they're inside the UFC? So I think though, this what is we a have, balance. I think exactly right. Where it's not even necessarily, I think, about the number as much as about percentage. And I that's why, you. like fighters with, um their gyms and their managers. It's not a set n number. They don't say, hey, everybody, if you're in this gym, you got to come off of five racks. They say, no, mm -hmm. we're going to do a percentage of what you okay. make. Right. What your, Correct. What your, your fight um, your fight purse is or whatever. Correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the same thing with different companies. Yeah, you can't ask for a company because there's like a, a mom and pop show, let's say, or shall we say the regional show, right? who might clear 100K. Do I expect them to pay their fighters 50K? I don't. I, I don't do that. You know, but they, there's a, a number percentage that, okay, like you need to come up off of X amount. But I'm done renting. <laughs> and, and the, the only thing that I will say to end it off is if they were to raise the minimum for the fighters, they have to get rid of, I would say over half, so right now we're sitting at close to 800 athletes. You have to. You, you just have to. Um, Why? That's just my opinion. Because over 800 fighters and you're looking at paying at the minimum 50, 50K a fight for them, you got to give them three fights a year. And then the winners of those fights, and we just talking about the minimum. We're not talking about the people that's already making. Because if, if, right. if the minimum person is 50K, then your person right now who's making – uh, 150. Hey, the price got to go up. The price got to go yeah, up for me. I'm not just gonna keep making 150 when, like, you know, Susie from Contender Series is coming inside here making 50k. Like, my price has to go up. The whole tide has to rise. You got to cut some yeah. of these fighters. You can't have over 800 fighters that you got to make uh fights for three times if, a year. If boxers are fully disclosing that they're making 50 million a fight in the, the same higher arena, higher upper, not the regular folks. Don't do I'm, that. I, I'm not saying. But even that, right? Let's just talk mm -hmm. about the creme de la creme, right? It is alleged that Connor made 50 million, you know what uh -huh. I mean? And Floyd made 100, mm -hmm. right? These are the same arenas that mm -hmm. the UFC does, right? It's not like it's it's it's, you know, one's in the Apex and one's doing a stadium show, right? It's a different model. Exactly. The and UFC needs to change their model. Right. And if they do change their model, guess what ends up happening? Deontay Wilder, who is currently, like like he said, currently in um 
lawsuits because he hasn't got that pay, hasn't got paid that thirty mil he's supposed to make on his last fight. Uh, your boy, what's mm. the big dude? Mayweather suing. These people are still suing. But we don't get that on the news. Like ESPN isn't like, hey, remember that fight that you guys all paid to see? Well, your fighter hasn't gotten paid that twenty, thirty million dollars that they said they were because they still waiting. You know what I mean? And like Eddie Hearn, one of the biggest uh, promoters uh, for. Boxing. What is it? Matrim. Matrim. Um, he talked about it. Like, he talked about how, like, yes, the percentage should be up for what the UFC fighters make, but that the UFC's model is more sustainable. Because he talked about how, like, these boxing companies aren't... I'm just saying what the, what they saying. The UFC model works for the UFC, not for the fighters. I'm going to say that. I agree. But you know what? We don't have an answer. Because we ain't cashing them checks. Yeah, <laughs> and it always is always gonna get heated when it comes to money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, no matter what it is, no matter what it is. So, twenty minute hot take. Holy shit! But don't. I mean, Jace, you have to agree that if we that if we raise the amount, right, that we gotta cut some of the fighters off. Some no, of these, some no, of these you don't. Regular fighters. You don't no, you don't. A hundred percent not. You just the UFC doesn't have to have. You know what I mean? Eight hundred percent profit. Maybe they just have 500% profit. Well, we don't know what their profit margin is. I'm just saying. Well, you kind of do because of the stock price. But they're up under Endeavor. They don't They don't have their own ticker. I so understand that. that Endeavor but it's still is a part everything. Of it. But it's still a part of it. If the UFC was bleeding cash and then being venture capitalists as they are, they would be gone. We're only a couple years in. We're only five and a half, almost six years in. We'll see. Cool. We will see. I hope you guys enjoyed this this last hot take. <laughs> Obviously, it's hot. Obviously, we don't have the answers. That wasn't even supposed to go that far. <laughs> it really wasn't. It really wasn't. That was a solid um, 20 minutes. Yeah, you know. But at the end of the day, we don't have the answers. We don't know anything. We could all be wrong. We could all be idiots. Um, yeah. who are just spewing out the same rhetoric. On a um, real uh, quick side note, Damien, how many uh, championships have you won? I can't even fucking call it, bro. That many. <laughs> hey, before we go to, hey, before we go to, I got a little bit of smoke for Damien too. Bro, why is you getting married the same day that Israel Adesanya is fighting? Come on, uh, man. Come on. I set, I set this up before. That was set up. <laughs> come on, bro. <laughs> oh, bro. Hey, hey real me. shit. Shout out I, to Damien already, getting married. Real shit. Hey, bro not, not even going to show it to his own wedding, honey. Uh, he like, I got to go watch the fight. Social media. I'm deleting social media. I'm not going to see anything. I do. I'm going to have to watch it. I do. <laughs> Can we you speed better. this up? <laughs> yeah, hurry <laughs> up. Yeah. Right. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, we are going to be out of here, y'all. It is way past our time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> we will be now. back. Cheers. Yeah, we'll, we'll be back to check out uh, the Corey Sanhagen fight and see the results of that. Uh, but for tonight, we out. Peace. Peace.